All right. What up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gym Report, giving you our review of the Black Adam film, a film that we have spoken about very, very much since, I guess, over a year now, Brian. I think it predates my involvement with this podcast. Yeah. Yeah, we talk, we've talked. We've been talking about it for a while. We've been talking about yeah. this for a while. I'll be interested in hearing uh, Tracy's t- take on this film. Very interesting. Um. So yeah, we're gonna talk about this. We're gonna do this show a little bit different. We're gonna break this up into uh, one, two, three, four, five, six categories. So we're gonna get six videos because I know you guys complain all oh, your shows is too long. So we're going to try to break it down. So our categories will be our overall impressions, right? That's the first category. The second will be story, direction, and visuals. I'll I'll try my best to not mix the, you know, both of these topics and so so that we can try to stay on topic. Uh, the next category we will be talking about is the rocks performance then we'll talk about supporting cast and then the implications for the dceu future brian i'm going to refer to you first Your overall impressions, and Brian, you and I have been talking, texting each other, not really engaging in long conversations, but we have been texting each other just the facts of what's going on with this movie at the box office, right? And just, you know, back and forth with news and whatever. But Brian, tell the people your thoughts on on the overall your overall impression on the, of this film. Well, first off, let's welcome everyone to the most electrifying <laughs> series of episodes that we've done on this show. <laughs> yes, I'm going to be insufferable when it comes to catchphrases because this movie couldn't tell me enough about catchphrases. <laughs> so I don't feel like I have to hold back making fun of all the rock signature phrases because catchphrases were a big part of this movie, which we'll get to that. Yeah. Here's my tagline. How this has played out is the worst case scenario for Warner Brothers and the DC Universe. The absolute worst case scenario, in my opinion. That's not to say it was the worst possible movie it could have been, but the way everything is shaking out Mm -hmm. to me has the biggest downside risk for DC fans over what might be coming. The overall impression, what I'll flesh that out over the course of these episodes, but that's my tagline. Uh, Let's give you a couple numbers, then we'll get to the impressions. So Pablo said numbers. I'm going to pause because you and I have just been dead freaking right about this movie when it came to its critical appeal and its commercial appeal. Numbers are in. If anything, we were a little generous. You know, a year ago, this is The Rock's billion dollar movie. Yeah. I said, you said, no, you said, I said, no chance. Yeah, 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 yeah. We saw the reactions. All the reactions were like a buzz about how awesome The Rock was, how awesome the movie was. And I said, nope, Rotten Tomatoes is going to be 45 to 50%. Yeah. Rotten Tomatoes is at 39% right now. In line, exactly in line with the Joss Whedon Theatrical Justice League. Exactly in line. That's bad company. It is tied for the third worst score a DC property has posted, trailing only um, Suicide Squad and uh, BBS. Yeah. Those are the only two movies that came below. 
box office. You are going to hear a lot of positive spin in the next couple of days about this box office. I am here to tell you this box office is a failure. Okay, and here's why it's a failure. Mm -hmm. You're gonna hear stuff about like, oh, it's the biggest open of The Rock's career. Statistically true, independent yes. of Fast and Furious. You're gonna hear stuff like, it was better than some of the long range tracking. Also technically true. You're going to hear it's tracking better than Shazam. I don't really know why that's praised, but you will hear it. Yeah. Here's why it's a failure. 67 million domestic, 73 international, 140 million global. A movie typically earns about three times, especially with the reviews this movie has. Mm -hmm. Typically earns about three times, maybe a little bit more of its opening weekend in total. So <clears throat> math, 140 times three, 420. 420 mm -hmm. for the movie The Rock said wanted he wanted to be his billion dollar baby. 420. And that doesn't include, that's me being like in a vacuum because Wakanda Forever in three weeks is going to destroy the box office. Yeah. In case anyone hasn't seen long range tracking on that opening weekend, 175, 225 US. Domestic. Only. <laughs> so, why is the number about 400, 420, 450? Pick your number. Why is that significant? This movie costs $200 million to budget, probably costs 75 to $100 million to market. That means this movie will lose money for Warner Brothers. You might even see because Warner Brothers is publicly traded and a reference to a write down taken on this movie sometime in the next quarter or two. This movie was not supposed to be in the red. No way, no how. They would not have given a $200 million budget if they thought they were going to lose money out of the gate on this film. That's why it's a failure. And I get it. China's not open right now. The Rock is very popular there. A lot of his movies have played very well there. He's not going to get the benefit of that in this case. But China hasn't been open for two plus years, really. So the studio knew the risk. So to come out of this with an L from a profit perspective, I think is a massive disappointment. So those are the numbers. I gave my own, the overall impressions to me is funny. I went with a friend who is a big fan of comics, like paper comics. He does a very good job of staying off. He knew nothing about the film. Like he had really stayed away from stuff we talk about. He didn't want me to tell him. And the theater was eh, a third full, wasn't really yeah. that full. Okay. He, leaned over to, he leaned over to me like 15 minutes into the movie. He said, yo, Green Lantern vibes. <laughs> <laughs> I just laughed because I, I barely like, remember that movie. I was like, wow, that's harsh. Um, but wow. look, all I can say is I think the movie is almost exactly what I expected it to be. It's not just this is not the worst superhero movie that's ever been made. It's not. It's not even the worst superhero movie this year. They should yeah. be sending Christmas cards to Morbius. <laughs> but it just in all the ways we expect it to be underwhelmed or beat over the head, that's what I felt like we got. I felt like we got a two hour movie that felt like it was four hours because it was so stuffed with cliches, with all the tropes that you and I had broken down that had been ripped off. We, we, we sold this movie short on the number of films they ripped off in the genre. Right. And by the end of and by the end of it, I just walked out saying, "There's nothing about this film that we're gonna remember in a couple of years. <laughs> even if Black Adam, even if Dwayne Johnson persists as Black Adam, even if Henry Cavill goes on to to a renaissance as Superman, I don't think there's really a scene in this movie." that you're going to remember or see memed or go back to rewatch. I just, there's nothing memorable to me about this film. It's just kind of there. Yeah. And that's just 
not good enough for what we're looking for in this genre and certainly not good enough for what the rock hype so that's my takeaway it's just kind of there pablo yeah i yeah i feel exactly how you feel about this movie man it's pretty much what i expected brian and there were certain things man that i was looking at i was like really yo i was vocal in the theater <laughs> my son looked over at me and was like yo if, my, if, it, if it wasn't for my son i think i would have walked out i'm like I, i'm done wow. i'm done have you ever walked out of one of these before i've wanted to but it's like no i've wanted to i've seen people just walk out of movies like i, I I've had enough of this. <laughs> and people somebody just walk did out. walk out of ours. Somebody did walk out of my show. When I watched the film in totality, it, it dawned on me that like, I really think they sat around in the room when they drew these up and storyboarded these scenes. And their number one goal and their conclusion was, yes, we are going to copy all of these things. We, we have a lot of data to suggest people like these scenes, these moments, these things through time. What we think is going to work is we're going to repackage all of those. And what you really want to see is you want to see the rock do all of these scenes. And that in and of itself is cool. And for his fan base, let's be straight. That worked. This is part of why I'm concerned because some of the audience scores from his fan base ate it up, which means we ain't gonna learn nothing from this experience. He's talking, he's walking around taking victory laps, talking about the audience score. And it's like, I, you know, don't worry, guys, we have good things to say. There are some good things. This is not the worst movie. You just got to wait. Yeah, it's not. got to wait. Yeah. I read a review that gave it no stars and called it one of the worst movies <laughs> ever made. And I was like, oh, hang on. Hang on. Okay, hang on. It's not Brian, that bad. But Brian, yeah, you can defend it, but you're not mad at it. If he feels that way, I'm not I, I'm not mad if you if you, if you love it. But it's it's hard to defend it. It's hard to defend it. Again, people who liked the film thought the story sucked. Yeah. He thought some of the CGI was all messed up. The only good thing people talk about is loving the rock. And we'll get to that because, ah, he's not the worst part of the movie, but he's not the best part of the movie either. No. Um, and not not by a long shot, I don't think. Yeah. Um, so if you you hit on it a lot. If you go through, I, I after I saw it, I went back and I, yeah, I watched some pods. I watched Campia's take on it, which I thought was pretty representative of. If you go through the positive reviews, a lot of the ones that were kind of like three out of five, you know, two and a half out of four. So that's positive, but kind of in the middle. It really was this dichotomy of. God, this was a train wreck, but I kind of had fun. And like, I think Campia's words were, I've never seen a more atrocious film where I actually had a good time. Like, that's not really what you're looking for, is it? Is that where that's like people that's that's like people going to see that that horrible movie called The Room, I think it was called, and people went to the theaters to throw tomatoes at there. That's a good time to go through. Come on, yo. It's like a story. Are you gonna read a bad book? How do you enjoy a bad book? You know what I'm saying? It's hard to defend it. It's hard to defend it. I remember one conversation I had after I, Justice League came out, the Josh Whedon version. I was going to the gym back then. And this dude was raving about Justice League. I was like, what you liked about it? He's like, the action sequences and and the explosion. I was like, what did you like about it, though, outside of that? Yeah, I think, so then I stepped back and I said, okay. 
you know, you like, look, this isn't, this is, this, our, our show doesn't have nerd in the title for no reason, right? So it's like, we consume the genre. So a lot of what we seek is either like a purity of like a translation of a character or originality or something that takes the character in the pages and does something really cool with it that we weren't expecting. Yeah. So we kind of already like, so that expectation, I don't think you had it. I don't think I had it going. We kind of knew we weren't getting that. Yeah. So if you like, if you are somebody who has watched even like black Adam and some of the animated, like what return of black Adam, where he has a big showdown with Superman, right? But you knew you weren't getting that black Adam. So yeah. already there's like a piece of the fan base that's like really dedicated to the genre that's kind of like out on, or at least sort of going to be underwhelmed by this because it's not trying to be that. Yeah. So then I said, okay, second level is, is this a worthy entry into just the superhero soup that we have right now? Like if you just span Sony and TV and, you know, Marvel and everything we've got going on. And like, to me, it's, that's where like, to me, it's just lost in the shuffle. It's like, as I said, it's not as bad as Morbius. It's not like, it, yeah. I, don't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't tell you that. Like, I would, I, but the rock, it fits to me. It really fits nicely into the rocks catalog because the way, like when I sat down and I was talking to my wife about it, who just has no interest in seeing it. And I said, when I think about the rock, what he's become is like, the Rock is my, he's my airplane movie guy. He's the guy when I get on a four hour flight and I got free entertainment and time to kill and I want to shut my brain off and maybe I'm going to take a 20 minute nap and eat my pretzels. That's where Rampage and Skyscraper <laughs> and Jungle Cruise and this movie are very valuable. Yeah. But once that two hours is up on the flight, I don't think about those ever again. Yeah, 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 and, yeah. and that's a shame to people yeah. like us who have waited, honestly, have waited as long as rock fans have waited to see this movie and see this character brought to life. That really hurts. So I yeah. think that level of fan probably is disappointing, which then leaves, <clears throat> maybe it's just the rock fans. But then I was trying to think like, okay, let's say you're not, you, you don't go to see superhero movies. Let's say you just don't, like you don't really buy into Marvel. You don't really even buy into Zack Snyder stuff. You just showed up for this because The Rock is headlining a comic book movie. And you're like, hey, I just want to see what that's about. That seems to be the audience that walked out much more entertained. But I couldn't get there even in that. Like if I'm trying to look at this as like an, just an action vehicle, like you say John Wick, like, you know what I mean? Like it's not like, it is not, nothing about like, this ain't Die Hard. This ain't Predator. There's nothing not about this that's like in the nothing unique of about it. There that's was nothing unique about this. It's like, yo, how do you tell me you watch you watch this movie and it reminds you about these other movies? For me, Brian, that's a distraction. It's like I want to be immersed to this this world and not be reminded for about ten minutes about this other movie that that you're just ripping off straight. So there's only 20 seconds in this movie where I was mildly entertained by the ripoff. And it was when they did the good, the bad, and the ugly. And they literally ripped the music. And I was like, that actually was, it made me smile just in a very, like, because I knew what was coming. I knew The Rock was going to annihilate all of these other people in this quasi gunfight. But it almost was, to your point, this movie in microcosm, because it was like, we are going to lift. We're going to go so far into lifting scenes from other movies. We're literally going to take, we're going to show you the scene on a little TV, and then we're going to replay the scene with the soundtrack from 1960 in any Morricone's movie. And we're just going to have The Rock blaze, you know, zap everyone with the lightning in, in the quick draw. That's, you know, That's it. Term, that was, for me, that was like the old snap Terminator. That oh, was, that was, save that analogy. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> um, that's so, part of it. yeah. My overall overall impression, Brian, is that I felt insulted. I felt insulted watching this, expecting more. There were moments, Brian, that I was like, "Okay, I was enjoying myself," 
until other things started to unravel. And then I was just like, I'm out, I'm out. I'm just here for my son so he can watch it. And that was it. Did he like it? I don't know if he liked it because I didn't like it. But he usually, I ask him every movie, he's like, oh, this was awesome. He loves, okay. he just loves Z, but I don't, you know what I'm saying? I was like very vocal. <laughs> it's a it's a great, it's a really great point you're making about that this movie didn't give itself time to breathe, let alone the audience time to breathe. You hear on it. There are moments, there are things we're going to talk about where I was A, either A, interested be entertained or see even impressed at a few moments. But because this was so jammed, there was like, just, it was like a, it was like a stack of pancakes of like action tropes and superhero tropes on top of each other. You couldn't savor the little bits that actually were legitimately good. Brian, it's like they didn't, is they didn't even try. Didn't even try. How does that feel? They didn't even try to 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 write something good. Oh, that's well, we'll get to that. That's you know. So that was my impression. I felt insulted by this film, and I'm like, yo, I, I, I know that some of you guys are gonna be like, what? Are you, listen, we're not. I'm not here to say that I'm a. A, a movie critic that I, I'm a film, con, you know, I, I, I love films and, I, and I've and i seen them enough to to know what I like in a film. To, to, for somebody to tell me that The Rock was dope and because The Rock was dope, this movie was dope. And some of the action sequences we'll talk about later, it's just kind of, that's a hard stance to take and defend when you talk about all the other elements of this film that did not work. And this are, these are complaints that many people say across the board. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, so th this movie also was very meta textual to me in terms of they're, they're really, you know, The Rock called it a passion project. In some ways I felt like I was interacting with to my mind, one of the great struggles of Dwayne Johnson's Hollywood career, which is there is there was a genuine connection that he had as a wrestler that I don't think he's been able to recapture as an actor. And I felt like this movie really summed that up. There, to, to draw an analogy, that you guys can go find this. Um, John Lasseter, who used to run Pixar and is now running Apple Animation, I think it was John Lasseter. There, there's, there's an interview where Will Smith talks about how he mapped out his career early on. And it was basically like he sat down with like, he sat down with like a couple of big wigs or his agent. And they literally just went through the highest grossing movies of all time. And they made a list of like, what were the themes and commonalities of those films? And then Will Smith tried to reverse engineer all of those elements into his selections for films, which led to, I mean, Will Smith was as bankable a movie star as there was in between 1995 and like 2005. But what it spoke to, to me, when you read that interview is how manufactured his career was. It really mm -hmm. wasn't a genuine performer, if you will, kind of doing what he was passionate about. It was, he's looking at what made the most money and what appealed to the most people, and then tried to put those elements into every choice he made. This movie, when we talk about copycats and ripoffs, we were having a good time. But this movie felt so engineered. Yeah. Every aspect of this movie felt like they had gone out into the, into the screenings, into the streets, into all these conventions, and just asked people, like, individual, what did you like? Like, individual elements. Do you like this? Do you like that? Great. We're going to give you all of that in two hours, and you're going to love it. And it's like, that's not how movie making works. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. We don't like, we don't remember individual action set pieces just because of the set piece. You remember them because of the film there. It's like Christopher Nolan does the, the truck chase in Dark Knight. 
Yeah, it's a great set piece. It's practical effects. He flips the trailer. It's not a great set piece just because it's fun to. It's a great set piece because the movie's great. Because yeah, yeah. the Joker and Batman, their conflict is great. Like, yeah, yeah. but this, but Black Adam would say, well, if I just steal the truck flip, that's great. And you should love it. And like, it just felt like that yeah, over and over gotcha. again. I was watching all these individual elements and I'm like, you mentioned like all the movies are reminding you of. To me, it was like all these little choices that have worked through the years were all stuffed into two hours and yeah. given to us with the expectation that we would just eat it up. No questions asked. Insulted. That is our overall impressions. You want to give it a score first or I'm going to give it a score first? Um, Out of five? Yeah. I know exactly where it slots for me, so go ahead. I'm going to say two out of five, man. Okay. Two out of five. So I'm at one and a half. Um, okay. And to me, it's a very precise one and a half because when I, I sat down and thought about what I've given to films this year, and I gave Morbius a one, and to me, very clearly, that is the worst film of the genre we've seen this year. I gave, you know, Doc Strange and Thor Love and Thunder, I gave those two. And to me, those films are clearly flawed movies, but a notch better than this movie. <clears throat> and then, of course, yeah. I, you know, I gave the I gave the Batman, I was up there at like four and a half, you know, so that to me was the highlight of the genre so far. We'll see what Wakanda Forever has to say, to say about that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, to me, like this very clearly slots between, it's better than Morbius. It is not as good as Doc Strange 2 and Thor Love and Thunder, even though those movies are certainly not great. And, you know, yeah, it's a very clear one and a half. And I think anyone who hasn't gone to the theater to see it, weirdly, despite a lot of big moments in on the screen, I think you can wait. I don't know that you have to see this on the biggest screen possible to feel like you got the experience. We'll get to that in the visuals, but yeah. I would just tell people wait. Yeah. It'll be on TNT in the, you know, Rampage back to back feature over and over again next couple of years. So you can just watch it then. Yeah. <laughs> it's like telling, hey, I went to this Harbor restaurant, go check it out. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm not gonna why would I do that to you um yeah those are